Okay, uh, as we are getting into this right now, uh, we are going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at how to do the uh, wall section plan that's part of the Southfield project. And so just to talk about what we're going to do here, um, first of all, it is related to the floor plan, the elevations, and the foundation plan we've already worked on. So as long as we have that, let's just take a look at what those would look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and what I want to do is I want to go ahead and open up a um, uh, drawing here. And so the drawing I want to open here is on my desktop, just so we see what this looks like. And um, back to my desktop, taking a look at this, what I want to see, if I can see it, is the wall section in the PDF format. And this is what it looks like. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to rotate this. Uh, I want to rotate it clockwise. Let's see here. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, rotate this to the right. So we'll go ahead and rotate clockwise and rotate again. As it won't let me do counterclockwise, so we'll do it this way. So we have this right now, and as we take a look at it, uh, you can see that it is a uh, fairly um, simple plan, but there's a lot going on inside of it. So let's just kind of pay attention to what's going on here. So with this right now, you see that we've got a... Uh, the bottom right here is a uh, foundation, and that's going to be on a certain uh, layer. It's 20 inches by 8 inches. you got an inch of rigid foam and so forth. There's some hatch patterns. And here's an interesting thing right here. You actually have um, uh, uh, some insulation, and that is on the bat layer. It has a certain kind of a uh, layer type that goes along with it. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at how all that works. So going to here, we're going to start a drawing, and we're going to use the template. And the template is again uh, on the uh, uh, on the blackboard, and so I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to grab the template for wall section. Looks like that. Now, when I do that, you're going to notice that I've got different uh, layers in here, and I'm going to start with my um, my footing. I'm going to go ahead and start with my footing, and the footing I'm going to start with, I'm going to go ahead and make it 20 inches by 8 inches. So I'm just going to make a rectangle. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go here and make it. Uh, 20 comma 8 and I've got that. Now once I've got that in place I would then have the ability to um, hatch the inside of it but we're going to wait on that. Uh, further than that going on up as you take a look uh, you're going to notice that there is a total distance of 24 inches uh, from the very bottom up to the very bottom of the grade. Okay so working that out uh, since the slab is 8 inches that means it's going to be 16 inches for the wall and it's offset six inches. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my wall layer. Um, actually, we'll see, yeah, we'll use the foundation wall. And I'm going to start my line here. I'm going to step in here six inches. So I'm going to go here and go in six. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go up 16. That's what I want right there. Okay, and then when I got that, I'm going to go ahead and go over here five inches because that's actually the width of that wall. So it's five at the top. And then I'm going to go down this distance right here, which is four. And then I'm going to go over here, which is in the distance of what I've had right there. That's going to be a total of three more inches over. And then we go down and boom, we have now have that defined. Okay, so we have that. Okay, so that's your profile. And going back to what we looked at right there, you see that I've got this kind of drawn up right now. So that's looking pretty good. All right, so back to here. And what I want to do is I want to start to put in some other details right now. Uh, first of all, um, you've got this bituminous joint, and the bituminous joint uh, can be made anywhere from like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. I didn't really give you a distance, but it doesn't want to. Be, you don't want it to be too fat. And so we're going to change the layer and going to go to. Uh, I'm going to use slab for that, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, start here, and I'm going to click here and down here. I'm going to go over uh, 0.25. That's probably plenty, and uh, going to go up here and touch it there and go there and click there. So now I have my bituminous joint right there. And then the hatching that has to be inside there uh, has to be um, basically spaced a certain distance apart. So staying on this layer, if I go to my hatching, I've got ANSI 31. And let me see how this looks if I put it inside here. And so it's kind of a little bit, little bit uh, further spaced. So I'm going to change that to four and see how that looks. And that gives me a little bit better look right there. So we'll go ahead and use the four. So I've got that right now, I've got my bituminous joint, and now I've got my four inch concrete slab here. So I'm gonna go ahead and staying on this slab layer, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my line right here. And over here, it's not determined how far out it goes, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start it and bring it out a decent distance, like that, more or less eyeballing it. 
And then um, I want to make sure that my dimensions are accurate here. So I want to just measure a couple things and make sure they're right. I'm just going to check my distance from here to here. This should be five inches, and it is. Okay, and then what I want to do is I want to measure uh, from, um, uh, again, going from here, going the distance. And uh, you can do this in setting point dimensions on, and that's eight inches, so that's correct. And then uh, going out a little bit further, uh, this should be 16, going from the bottom on up to the top of the wall. So go to here to here, and that's one foot four, 16. And then going down this direction, that's eight inches. We're good to go. Okay, got everything I need. So I'm going to continue on here, and I'm going to make my other line, and that's going to start from here. I'm going to go ahead and drag it out to here and touch it there and stop it right there. So now I have those lines. Now let's verify that those are correct by measuring them again, and I'll put my dimensions in later. So I'll click here and click to there, and that's four inches. We're good to go. So now what I've got right now, I have a, um, a WWF layer, which actually is warrior reinforcement, which is a dashed line. And I want to put a line right through the center there. So I'm going to use my WWF layer and start my line. And I'm going to go here and pull it down and touch it here. Now you'll notice that the dashing on that is a little bit more than I want it to be. So I'm going to need to change that. By the way, I'm going to look at my layers. And as I take a look at my layers, you're going to see that there are some different things here. First of all, there's your layer colors. And then you have a few different line types. You have hidden that's associated with WWF. And you have uh, batting that's associated with the bat layer. And then you have uh, essentially colors associated. So that's what we're looking at right now. So this right now, since it is hatched, um, there's too much, um, uh, the, hatch, the spacing is too close. I'm going to go to properties. And um, I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go ahead and change it, uh, change the line type scale from 1. Let's make that 4 as well. And when I make it 4, that's looking pretty good. I could make it a little larger, but that'll do for right now. So I'm going to close out of there. So now I've got these basics. Now one of the things that, um, that I've got going on here, which I'm going to get to in a minute, is uh, the hatching and also the break line. So we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, also uh, in this right here, you'll notice that there is this rigid foam over here. This is one inch, and so I can go ahead and draw that right now. So drawing that one inch rigid foam, I can go ahead and continue on with uh, using the footing. And I'm going to go ahead with my line, and I'm going to touch it here and go over and make it one inch. And then I'm going to go ahead and go up and over and over and down, and there we go. So I got that right there. And I want to hatch that also. That's one inch rigid foam. And so I would hatch it going to here, and I'm going to go do the same thing and go ahead and touch it there. And uh, now we're looking pretty good. I think that's also set it for us, so I think we're in a good spot right now. So moving on from there, uh, I also have this... Uh, four millimeter vapor barrier right here, okay, which is just like, that's going to be a, a quarter of an inch too, so we're going to go and put that in. So I'm going to put in my quarter inch, so I'm going to start it here, and go down to here and 0.25, and then over. And so we're going to go over, and uh, we're going to go ahead and touch it here, and bring it down, and I'm going to go ahead and just leave that, uh, I'm going to close it like that. Now that right there, uh, we're not going to hatch that. So we have this basically going on right now, and it's looking pretty good. And now I want to begin to put in a couple of text items. Uh, well, we'll get to that in a second. I'm going to keep on drawing right now. So I want to continue drawing my wall. And it's a five inch thick wall. If we take a look at this, the uh, dimension up here tells us it's five inches. Okay, so I want to have that on the wall layer. And then I've got half inch sheetrock on either side. Okay, so what we're going to do right here is we are going to go ahead and um, we are going to go to the wall layer. Uh, the walls layer, and I'm going to go ahead and touch it here, and I'm going to go straight up, and I'm going to give it about that much of a distance. Uh, let me undo that. I don't want two of them. So I want to go up there, and then we'll go ahead and bring it up to around there, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw another one right here, and I'm going to start from here and go up, and we're going to have that. So we have to have that, and touch it there, and bring it over. So then I can offset those so that they're half an inch over, uh, thus giving me my... Um, uh, giving me my uh, my wall thickness. So here this is gypsum and I misspoke before this is actually sheathing on the outside So that would not be gypsum on the outside because you don't put gypsum on the outside of a wall So we've got uh, sheetrock and then we've got sheathing on the uh, outside half inch sheathing Okay, so we're looking pretty good here, and I think I'm gonna Bob probably gonna shorten these out a little bit, but for right now I'm gonna save this I'm gonna save it as uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just save it to my desktop and I'm gonna call this wall uh, we'll call it wall, come on you, I just use all capitals, wall, wall section T1, 
can be. 2019. Like, like that. So we got that. Now at this point, there's a few things I want to add on to here. And one of the most important things that I want to show you that's actually kind of cool is the insulation. And so first off, I'm going to shorten these right here. So I can use a stretch command, and this is actually kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and take this and kind of pull this down a little bit. And I can use a stretch command that way. And uh, that brings that down. Now, your bat, this is interesting right here. I've got this bat right here. And it's going to give me a line type that actually looks like insulation. So I click here and I begin to pull it up. And you'll notice that um, right now it's got just kind of a generic thickness right there. Not fat enough, but it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to click on it and then right click and go to properties. And then my properties, I want to make it line type scale is 4. So I do that, boom, we are good to go. That's looking good. So we're able to put in the insulation that easily by just using the uh, line type. So again, this is all associated with the fact that this is a line type called batting. And so that is how we could go ahead and do that. All right, we'll get out of here. I'm going to cancel out of there. Okay, so we got that. Now, the next thing that we have are a couple of break lines. Now, the break lines are, um, I'm going to put them on my dimensions layer. And your break line is actually located up here under Express Tools. It's on your ribbon under Express Tools, and you have this break line symbol. So the break line symbol is a little bit weird, but it's not terrible. So you click on the two points, and then you tell it where you want the break line. And mine's going to go right there. So you do that, and you can go ahead and break it. And then down here, I have a double break line. So I can repeat it and just like go to here and go down to there, uh, right to there. And then I go ahead and break it right there. So I've got that. So I would accept just a single break line on that side and a single break line up here. Uh, I would go ahead and accept that. And then I'm going to trim uh, with this right here. And I'm going to trim off this section right there so that that doesn't blow.